Hi there, this is Math 148, Section 9.7. Now we are looking at putting it all together. This is using the derivative rules in one problem, lots of derivative rules in one problem to look at more complicated derivatives. So we're not actually introducing new rules in this section, we're just throwing the old ones together in a mishmash. So most of your homework problems will just be find the derivative. But that's good, because that's a fun thing to do. It's like, I consider it actually like a game, sort of like Sudoku. You're just sort of using your mathematical mind, kind of figure these things out. So here's question number 11. We have y equals x cubed minus 4x raised to the 10th, all divided by 10. So find the derivative. In this case, we have y prime, you could also say dy dx if you want, is going to be, well, we can factor out this 10 on the bottom. It's divided by 10, but if you want, you can think of the, that as 1, you know, times 1 tenth. So we can factor that out in front, and now we're having the power rule. So that first thing was the constant rule. So 10 times x cubed minus 4x, and then we're going to subtract 1, so that's to the 9th. And now we have to take the derivative of what's inside this piece, so that's going to be 3 x squared, again, power rule, 3 jumps in front, minus 4. So we're almost done. This one, the tens cancel, and we are left with x cubed minus 4x raised to the ninth times 3x squared minus 4. So a lot of the time for these problems, you're going to be spending simplifying some big complicated algebraic expression. So in this case, you had this big thing. Now we have to, then you have to simplify it. I will show you more simplification here in another problem. Number 17, the problem says y equals x squared minus 4 cubed divided by x squared plus 1. So now I'm going to start over here. I want yellow. Our derivative, y prime, is equal to, this is going to be a straight application of the quotient rule. So the quotient rule, you take the denominator, the piece that's on the bottom, x squared plus 1 times, now we take the derivative of the top part. So that's just 3 times x squared minus 4. Subtract 1 there, give squared. We're not done yet because now we have to still take the derivative of the inside piece times 2x, like that. So that's the whole first piece. It's, it looks a little messy, but just kind of chug along, pretty straightforward. Subtract, and now we take the derivative of the bottom piece, 2x, that. That's the derivative of this bottom. And then leave the numerator the same. And that's all divided by, do you see how this is the, it's like this the derivative of the one on the top times the one on the bottom minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator all divided by x squared plus 1 squared because it's this piece squared. So now I'm going to do a little factoring. So this is pretty messy, but um, I would like you to simplify these a little bit on the test. So the first thing I'm noticing is that each one of these pieces there is a 2x, so we can factor out a 2x, right? I'm going to write this down. Factor a 2x and an x squared minus 4. How did I know to do that? Well, I'm just looking and saying, well, there's a 2x there and a 2x there. There's an x squared minus 4 there and an x squared minus 4 there, all right? So I'm going to factor those out in front, give myself a little space, and I'm going to get a, we'll do 2x first. 2x. The, both of these have an x squared minus 4, at least to the power of 2, so x squared. I can factor out an x squared minus 4 squared. You see that? Okay, what does that leave me with in here? Also maybe that cancels, that cancels. So this piece becomes 3 x squared, right? That piece is left, plus 3. And then I have minus. So the x squared went out. That two of my x squareds went here. So that leaves me with the x squared minus 4. I'll leave it in parentheses like that. All divided by, right now I'm going to do the divided by in this way just so I can have another line. So that would be x squared plus 1 squared. So notice this is a big divided by. I just sort of changed my fractional form there. So now I'm going to simplify again. I have 2x 
x squared minus 4 squared. Now I'm going to simplify this piece. So all that is 3x squared minus x squared. That leaves me with a 2x squared, because 3 minus 1 is 2. And then we have plus 3. And notice this is minus minus, so that's all going to be plus 4. So plus 7. So our final answer is 2x times x squared minus 4 squared times 2x squared plus 7, sorry 7, all divided by x squared plus 1 squared. So again, most there will be some time on these problems where you are spending simplifying the algebraic expression, but that's good news because that's math that you've already learned. So you can, you know, just sort of enjoy the process and freshening up your skills. Okay, one more problem that's a little bit more of an application. Number 35 is looking at the physical productivity. It's assuming that you have a construction, or do you have a construction plant or just a construction site? And your physical productivity, if that's in work, I don't know if that's in joules or what they're measuring that in as far as um, the, you know, measuring. And X is your number of workers. So in this case, it says find the marginal physical productivity. And marginal should be a word that jumps out at you now when you think marginal should think derivative. So you want mar marginal physical productivity. So in order to find the marginal, I want to say anything. There's probably something that you can't take the derivative for just to find the marginal thing, but we have yet to discover it in these sections. So the marginal physical productivity, and that's going to be the rate of change of physical productivity, is the first derivative, again, p prime of x. So now we're back to a derivative problem. We're leaving aside our construction site for a moment. So the derivative of this first piece is going to be 10, because the constant factors out in front. Three jumps in front. We have 3x plus 1, subtract 1 there is 2, and we still have to multiply by the derivative of what's inside. I set the chain rule times 3 minus, ah, the derivative of a constant is 0. So now we have 10 times 3 is 30 times 3 is 90, and then 3x plus 1 squared. So that is the marginal productivity. Sometimes they write it like this, marginal productivity, and then they put a line in the, over the top. So that might also be the way you see some of this notation. So I've noticed when I was doing these homework problems, the application sections were not as hairy a problem as just the straight derivatives. So don't be nervous when you get to the applications. They tend to be a little bit more straightforward. So you guys are doing a good job with these derivatives. Keep kicking away.